Hi everyone, this is Matthew Archambo. I'm, I'm on like my fifth take of this intro, so I'm gonna do my best to get through this one without screwing up. Basically, uh, my name is Matt, and um, most of you guys know me from JordanTutorialsOnline.com. I wanna share with you uh, a segment from a painting tutorial that I did at Painting Tutorials Online, a new website that I've created. And we've, we've mainly just been working with oil painting tutorials. We're gonna eventually get into digital uh, painting tutorials as well, but we're starting step by step by step from the basics, okay? So in this uh, step 20, I'm really reminding all the members on the website to really try to push having a definitive light source in their paintings. And uh, it's just something that you wanna be a little bit more conscious of when you're going into your paintings, is having a light source. And let me share with you part of this painting tutorial. All of the painting tutorials and drawing tutorials that we do start from blank paper and blank canvas. We never start a painting tutorial or a drawing tutorial uh, from you know a halfway finished piece. We always start from scratch. So enjoy watching this one and I'll talk to you soon. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of my brown and make this dramatic. So I, I'm doing a lot of manipulating values, but I'm manipulating values in a subtle way. It's not extreme uh, manipulation of the values. I still want to have a little reflected light and I want to turn this so I'm going to have to come up so we make this thing round just wiping some paint off. I'm trying to do most of the painting with this sable um, and see how it goes not using the, the flat synthetics. See the different effect that I get with a different brush. haven't even done any rendering up top. I'm kind of going with more of like a round motion. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and put some of these little striations. Oh, not dark enough. So we speak about uh, value ratios on the site quite often, and uh, when you have, there's never an, an ideal situation. You know, when you have an apple, uh, which is a light object, this apple is a, definitely a light object. Now my va value ratios are getting skewed because it's against um, a dark environment, and there's dark reflecting into everything. So my apple now is going to get much darker in in the shadow than it would if it was against the light, okay? Because the light, the value ratios are true to a light object. But once we go into a dark environment, then all bets are off. I'm just trying to flatten the brush. Um, that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm, I don't like, I'm gonna go a little lighter. I'm trying to use this one brush. Okay, so now it's time to clean this brush. I don't have turpentine out. I used turpentine once today to clean my palette because I didn't clean my palette from the last time I finished painting and the paint was really hard on the palette. And so I, I really needed to loosen it up with terps. So now I, I just don't want to deal with inhaling terps too much. So I'm using refined linseed oil to clean the brushes, which isn't as good as terps. But as soon as I put terps on here, everything's just going to change. It's going to loosen everything up. A little bit more yellow. I'm using too much white paint. Oh, there goes my stomach growling. That's no good. Trying to take advantage. Right now I am I am the luckiest man in the universe. 
because nobody is home and uh, that means quiet and nobody is outside and that means quiet so um, yeah okay I just made a little boo-boo um, basically what I did was I took yellow paint right off the palette and I mix it in here and I didn't mix it enough and I just went into the apple now granted there's some serious yellow on that apple so it's not the end of the world but this just goes to show you that it's really sometimes in your best interest to pre-mix a lot of the paint that you use because you just don't do as good of a job when you mix with your brush and then you get all these you know different variations in, in chroma and again not the end of the world it's just a study but you know if this was a final paint and I, I you know I'd want to have everything just a little bit more together okay cleaning the brush and I'm going to use a different softer bigger brush I liked it better how I had it before. We've got to turn it. Yeah, I liked it much better than when I just put that yellow on there. So let's see if we can't get it back to where we liked it. Squint at it. Now I haven't put my highlight in there yet. Oh, paper towels, paper towels, paper towels. Okay, I'm just gonna fold over one of my napkins because I'm running out of space to clean my brush. This one's way more painterly. Now what I'm going to do with this brush is take my Windsor Yellow, mix it with Titanium White on my palette. It's nice and clean. And uh, let's just experiment. There's a lot more modeling I can do. A lot. So I'm squinting at it. I'm not getting a, a, I want a better sense of light. So I'm going to manipulate. These are some really different colors right over here. This is actually very cool. I like that green a lot. It's something very different. Okay, that has more of a sense of light. Dig that. Oh, much better, much better. Look at the difference in the two, it's insane. Now, I could, let me get my paint in stick. I've got it right here, my mall stick, however you wanna say it. And uh, I'm just gonna play a little bit. We're about at 20 minutes for this. And uh, let's see what happens when we use a brown. I'm going to stay away. I'm, I'm purposely staying away from little brushes for you guys uh, because I know not everyone on the site paints with the little brushes, nor do they want to. And it's good for me to use bigger brushes. Now, let's put the top plane. On here. The stem. I'm just looking. I'm squinting at it. 
I just want to play and see what happens when I do open. A little atmosphere down below. It loses a little bit of its drama. Okay, cleaning this big mama brush. Making sure my pan and stick doesn't fall. And uh, we're gonna go really intense black. My wife probably would just make fun of the way that I said that, that really intense black. Um, yeah. Really intense black. Down at the bottom. Turn it into the apple, so it's not just sitting there. I, can't, I don't know guys, I, I, I think it's done. Um, for a quick little study of top light. And uh, look, at, look at how different it is compared to the one to the left. I'm looking at my computer screen and um, it's top light. What, what would happen if I took this black and, you know, I, I went in, can give it a couple of different brush strokes. I, I can manipulate the values and um, not worry so much about value ratios. And I can give this a, a dark halftone and just turn it a little bit. It makes it more dramatic.